Okay. The other, the other thing I think one needs to throw in here because there is uh, altogether way too much focus on uh, one central bank, namely the Federal Reserve. One needs to look more broadly at what other central banks are doing. Now, I say that in, uh, in really regard for two things. One is to question what the People's Bank of China uh, is doing. And the PBOC is the second most important central bank in the world and actually the most important central bank when it comes to understanding the impact of monetary policy on real economies. Uh, and that's simply because China's economic footprint is so large. So whatever the People's Bank of China does tends to show up not so much in financial markets, but in real economic activity. Now, what China's PPOC had been doing or has been doing for much of the last six months has been injecting huge amounts of liquidity uh, into Chinese money markets. And that has actually helped to turn the Chinese economy around. Now, we're starting to see the early signs of that being impacted. So if you look at commodity markets, they're beginning to strengthen. If you look at Asia Pacific trade volumes, they're actually surging. And this is all indications that the PBOC has been easing. However, there's always a proviso here. Uh, in the wake of the end of the Lunar New Year, so we're talking about uh, end of February through the first half of March, the PBOC has actually not been adding liquidity at all. So what you've had is a natural roll off of liquidity in Chinese markets. And uh, that is effectively the net of the net has meant that there's actually been some tightening by the PBOC. Now, the, the uh, reason for that uh, may be technical, it may be accidental, there may be nothing deliberate going on here, or it may be an attempt to try and stabilize the yuan. However, in recent days, what you've seen is the yuan weaken significantly, and it may be an indication that the Chinese are now prepared to actually ease liquidity a lot more in coming weeks. And that's the stance we take. We've long had the view that the yuan, the Chinese renminbi, in other words, is likely to be a weak currency this year. And that would give the Chinese, uh, if you like, some uh, opportunity against that backdrop, uh, rather than sort of trying to hold the yuan up against a strong dollar, is actually to allow the yuan to weaken and therefore buy that to uh, uh, push more liquidity into markets. So that would be positive for the world economy and generally positive for fin financial markets if the PBOC continues to do that. Now, the corollary of that would be that uh, the Japanese therefore allow the yen to weaken, uh, and that seems to be uh, what's going on. And uh, I would imagine that you've got a backdrop here whereby uh, the, the inclination of many, many countries around the world would be to allow their currency to weaken against the dollar, and therefore that would signal the fact that they're more than prepared to let monetary policy ease. Now, if, having made that statement, we face a situation where the dollar itself may come under pressure, downward pressure, because of uncertainty about the election, uh, the upcoming election, or uncertainty about the uh, strength or robustness of the US fiscal situation, uh, if the dollar therefore started to weaken, you may therefore get an opportunity for many other governments to actually begin to ease their monetary conditions a lot more aggressively. And I think that's the state we're in, because as far as I can see, uh, if you listen to what the ECB is saying, or you listen to the PBOC is saying, or if you listen to the Bank of Japan, they all want to ease now. And they see this as an opportunity. So I think what you may be seeing is a period where we get some coordinated easing from policymakers worldwide. And that's clearly a significant, uh, uh, you know, a significant event.